Hello and welcome to ClickCentral.com, um, it's another video. Um, on this video we're talking about four next loops within scripts. I had a friend of mine once who uh, didn't really like looping within scripts. Um, but it is very useful um, to know how to do it and uh, on a, a project a little while ago I tested the difference between looping through and, and loading a day at a time or loading a whole lot of data in one one go and the one day at a time uh, was considerably faster um, than bringing back information in, in you know years worth of information so I'll talk you through the, the basic idea um, I'll put another link as well to another video which is um, about doing an ETL an incremental load within ClickView and th that uses the four next loop as well but I'll just show you on this video the principles um, of how it works so we'll set up a new script, uh, we'll put a new tab, we'll call it looping. Okay. So the for next loop um, is, is very straightforward. So we start with a for um, and we'll put in a, a variable. So it could be any variable name that you want, so a cursor would be the obvious one, um, or y value or i or something like that. Or, you know, and then, then basically what we do is we'll tell it to go from a point to another point so you could say from 0 to 100 and we need to put an equal sign in there so it's telling me off there we go and then we finish it off with a next um, you can actually put the cursor in again but you don't need to and um, click view will automatically understand the nested statements together and they need to be together so it understands how to loop so the basic principle is is the, the code will come through, hit the for next loop and it will say right cursor will equal zero, it will execute here, then go back next, back up again, it will equal one, and then back then two, and then three, then four, and so on and so forth, right to so a hundred, and it's a hundred, it will then continue out of the loop and continue with the rest of the script. You can change it, so you can do a step of ten, for example. Um, or even if you wanted to go to minus 100, you could do step minus 1. So I go 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc, etc, etc. So I'll set that back to 1. That's the most common one. And you can also change these as well to be variables as well. So that could be a min date and a max date. And that's what I use um, within the incremental load script. Again, I'll, I'll post a link for that video. So just to show it working, we'll do a a simple table so we will load um, and then we'll do the cursor as the cursor auto generate one put space in there make it work bring that back look it'll pretty so it'll run through a hundred times and create a table generate a line um, of the table and each time the the v cursor um, field will have the ver the attribute of v cursor I think actually I need to put that within there, and I may have to put quotations in, I'm not too sure, well, let's just put quotations in as well just to make sure. Okay, so I'll run it through. Okay, so it happened obviously very, very quickly. It ran all the way through to 101, that's because we started at zero, obviously. Now if we were to look at that field, there we go, zero to 100. Final step I'll show you on this is the exit. So if we'll say v cursor equals 50 then now a lot of people know the exit script there's also the exit for as well. So what will happen here is it will run through again 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, keep going when it hits this and that's true, so when the V cursor hits the 50th loop, it will then hit here, which is exit 4, and that will automatically say, enough's enough, we're going to jump out and continue with the code, sort of down here, so it will jump out before the loop has a chance to finish. So now it should just go to 1 to 50, there we go, excellent. The reason for that is, it's, it's very handy to be able to exit a loop based on certain criteria. So one example again on the incremental load script is I will look back at monthly QBD so I'll set up a loop that will step back current month, previous month, 
two months prior to find the latest QVD that's been stored. Typically the latest one will be this month, but once it's found it, we don't want to keep going back to previous months to keep looking for QVD files, we want it to finish at that point. So again, the exit 4 is absolutely perfect for that. Okay. Anyway, thank you for watching, I hope it's been helpful. Um, please feel free to leave your comments around this video or any other ideas you've got for any other videos in the future. Um, loads of videos on the Click Central um, YouTube channel and also on the clickcentral.com um, blog. Thanks very much for watching.